Hey, we are back with another pickup video, and today we are checking out the Sony PlayStation Classic. So without further ado, let's hop right into the review here. So we got the PlayStation Classic, and we're going to do a little unboxing here and show you everything that <laughs> is and is not inside the box. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. So we got the PlayStation Classic box here. We got the 20 incredible games that defined an era. Now, I will say there are some decent games on here. We have Battle Arena Toshinden, Toshinden Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Final Fantasy VII, Grand Theft Auto, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, Mr. Driller, A Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, we have Rayman, Resident Evil Director's Cut, Revelations Persona, R4, Ridge Racer Type 4, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Siphon Filter, Tekken 3, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, Twisted Metal, and Wild Arms. And wow, these are some pretty good titles on here, and some of them I'm like, why are they even on here? Like uh, Mr. Driller, Super Puzzle Fighter, Destruction Derby, Jumping Flash, probably didn't need to be, need to be included on here. But everything else seems pretty on point. I know a lot of people complain about Rainbow Six and... Um, the play rate of some of these games, but some of these were actual like monumental back when this when the original PlayStation One was released. I mean, Wild Arms definitely was a favorite of mine. I mean, a lot of these Metal Gear Solid, Final Fantasy VII, uh, Rainbow Six, Twisted Metal, Tekken, Siphon Filter, Grand Theft Auto, a lot of these Odd World, all and Rayman, Intelligent Cube was definitely a solid title for the the console. Um, the only one I'm saying that would that is missing on here is. Um, Probably Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and that's uh, you know currently on PS4. You can get it for twenty bucks. It's like nineteen ninety nine, and I can see why it's probably not included on here because you got a twenty dollar title included on a hundred dollar system with nineteen other games. It seems kind of off off balance. But in the other hand, it should have been included a hundred percent in this release because it was probably if not. If Final Fantasy VII is the most popular one for the console, then Symphony of the Night, I would say, would be second. And arguably, definitely the second uh, best game on the console, for sure. And in fact, it wasn't included in this. is kind of disappointing. But everything else that is included in this is um, pretty solid. I mean, the ones that are on here solid. If you were to buy these individually, uh, it would cost you a pretty penny to get some of these games. Um, so let's check out what's in the box. And let's cut the, uh, let's cut the little tape here look at this lift it out it's got a little little butterfly fold here so here's the actual ooh, look at that it's like a ps4 box that's pretty sweet so they did it like the the newer consoles where it has a slip a slip on the outside and a white box on the inside so that's neat let's see this is SCPH 1000 R. So I guess the R is the the retro. Because the 1000, I believe, was the original uh, model number for the original PlayStation, which is cool. So you got the white box. We'll put that aside. We got another white box on the inside. They didn't skimp on the packaging. So we got the PlayStation Classic, uh, the instruction manual here, which explains what everything is um, and how to use it. Which we're not going to check that out right now. But let's look at the other stuff that they got in here. Look at this little thing. This is so neat. Such a little, little treat. A little miniature console. Wow, it looks exactly. Uh, it's even got the pads and everything. That's cool. Yeah, this looks spot on. And it's even got the little door back there. Okay, cool. So the bottom here, we'll check out the bottom first. Since that's what we're looking at. We got the labeling everything looks exactly man this is really cool um how they made this look pretty much identical to the other one. Oh wow that's awesome uh back here you have the expansion slot which is cool that they kept that in there they definitely borrowed that from nintendo's likeness and that's awesome the attention to detail definitely is on this as well hdmi port right there looks pretty solid on that hdmi port right there and then you got the power port right here which has a different color uh, framing on that as well the sides have the nice side vents just like the original and they're not fake they actually have cuts little slits and fins in there so that's really cool how they paid attention to that detail along with the bottom fitting i noticed that they put all the original vent work on there as well which is super cool to have that uh, transition over there the front right here we have the memory card slots right there with the 
uh, looks like they're doing a USB style controller right there, which you can see. And then we got the open button, which is a button, not sure what it does. Um, you have the power button and then you have a reset button. Not sure what the open button does, but I'm sure if we check out the manual, it'll explain what actually it does. Cause there is a reset, a power and an open button on there. So that's the console itself. And then let's see what we got in here. Looks like we got some elaborate folds here. And then uh, nonsense. So we got the HDMI cord right here. HDMI cord. Power cord right there, which is a USB power cord to a looks like it's a micro USB. Let's check it out. Looks like, yeah, micro USB. So micro USB cord right there. And then regular USB, which plugs into the back of the console, or the, um, yeah, the back of the console right there. You plug the micro in there. And then I guess you plug this into, uh, they didn't include anything, but they should have included a power brick, which doesn't look like there's a power brick in here. The box is completely empty. That is, that's interesting. That's kind of leaving a bad taste in my mouth. So let's check out the controller. Check out the controller. Wow, this looks like a brand new minted PlayStation 1 controller. This is a pretty cool moment right here because this is exactly what it felt like when uh, I probably unboxed my first PlayStation uh, and played it for the first time. This is, this is what it felt like. Definitely felt like it's spot on to the exact way that it was designed originally. And you have the 1000R model number on the bottom. Really cool. And then the plug is, look at that. It's even a mini plug. Uh, the aesthetics of this is amazing. Look at that. You got a little placard on the back with the, with the little model number and you got a little scan code on the back. USB, it looks exactly, this is insane how this looks exactly um, like the original control. It feels like it too. And you got these little miniature, these little miniature controller connectors here. Look at that. Let's check it out. It looks exactly like it did when you plug them in. That is really cool. That is super cool. Now, I will say the one thing I don't like about this is I don't like the fact that it didn't come with Symphony Night, which we talked about, but I don't like the fact that it didn't come with a brick. Why didn't it come with a brick? Um, or some kind of charging, charging brick or something like that. I know that the the concept of this is for you to plug this into the back of the console and for you to plug this end into your your TV. Because uh, most TVs, I guess, now have smart plugs for USB on them. I don't know why. I mean, if you don't have a, a TV with a USB plug on it, you're going to need to use a power brick. And again, I don't recommend plugging this into your TV because I don't know what kind of power your TV what kind of power your TV is going to draw. On the back of the box here, I did notice earlier it did say right here where it says, use the included USB cable to connect the console to a USB power source that supports 5 volt and 1.0 amp minimum output, such as a USB AC adapter not included. Basically, they're saying get a charge brick for this. I imagine they didn't include the charge brick because most people have charge bricks laying around, but if you have charge bricks laying around, they're probably using them to charge other... other um, devices and for a hundred bucks you should give us a, a, a charge brick i mean charge bricks they cost under a buck uh to create you gave us two controllers you went through the detail of making the connections for the controllers look exactly the way that they looked when they actually were plugged into an original console only miniature in form why couldn't you give us a power brick um symphony of the night is arguably something that's a short cry for having a power brick i mean you can't play this console without a power brick so if you don't own one and you don't have one you're not gonna be able to play this console i'm telling you right now don't plug it into something thinking it's going to be a power source but you have to check the power draw ratings and the power output ratings for whatever you're plugging it into if it's a tv you don't want to ruin your tv plugging this sony playstation classic in or anything uh, of vice versa you don't want to ruin this by putting too much power to it so let's check out what the reset button is. So the open button, let's check out what the open button is for. What are we, what is it open? And that was the last mystery that we have here. So we have the PlayStation Classic, that is another language. Let's 
So let's see here, AC adapter. Looks like the open button. Turning your console. Okay, so it even shows you in here to have an to get an AC power brick, not included. Um, okay, here we go. So switch switching discs. You might need to switch to switch virtual discs for PlayStation format software that was originally provided on multiple discs. If a message appears asking you to switch discs, press the open button on the console. Okay, so the open button allows you to switch through multiple discs within a single game that you're playing on the console. Okay, that makes sense. And then the reset button obviously resets the console, which is cool. And it's, it is so neat that they made, um, they made a, they figured out a way to take the open button and turn it into something that could be usable. And it's not just a dummy button. That's really cool. The attention to detail they put into this is superb. I mean, it actually looks like this is a hinge back here, a hinged, a hinged lid, like it's gonna open. Um, that was, at first that threw me off. I thought that was actually a hinged lid, but it's not, it's just made to look like that. They went through the detail of this to make this absolutely superb in its design. Um, and, and very, very close competitor to the quality type design that Nintendo would put out. But the fact that it didn't include a power brick was kind of shortcoming. When you pay $100 for something like this, you expect it to be complete out of the box. If you don't have a power brick or something like that to plug this into, you're not going to be able to use this. And I think that that's, that's very unfortunate. But anyway, I mean, you gave us three cardboard boxes for all of this to be packed in, but you couldn't give us a power brick. It's not like we're saving uh, carbon footprints here. Do you know what I'm saying? And each one of those boxes had printing all over it. So, and then there's that. Um, but other than that, and you gave us two manuals here in different languages. So, I mean, that's printing in itself. It just gives us a power brick. It's the only thing that we need to make this thing complete. For you to get like a full positive review from anybody, you're gonna need to include a power brick. So if I guess, if Sony's paying attention to this, I mean, and they put out other models of this, or this isn't just a limited run thing, put power bricks in the next model if you release this again, put power bricks. Symphony of Night, that's something that's a far cry from something that's incomplete without you having to provide some of your own hardware to make this thing function. So if you like the Sony PlayStation Classic and you've tried it out, let us know in the comments below. If there were some games that they left out and that are missing, let us know down there as well. If you have a justifiable reason why they left out the power brick for this, besides the fact that they are trying to cut corners on something that is a functional part, please let us know in the comments below. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want more content like this, subscribe for more. I do pick up videos every single Thursday. I dropped this one a little early because today was release day. So have a great rest of your day.